With phase one of our honeymoon complete, Kaz and I decided to do something that we'd never done before. So we'll see you. See you soon. Well, fun. Yes. Cool. Yeah, okay. Enjoy your second honeymoon. <laughs> see ya. Bye guys. We decided to cash in some of our frequent flyer miles and set out for the big city. New York City to be exact. Our mission was simple to soak in the contrast between boat life and city life, to gorge ourselves on pastrami sandwiches, unlimited hot showers, and see what the Big Apple was all about. So we handed the helm of Delos over to Senior Brady and Blue for the week, who had little adventure of their own in mind. So this is a very exciting moment for me because in the two years I've been on Delos, these are my first friends oh. that are coming out to visit. And they just arrived in Antigua. And look at how cute they are. They've got their matching hats. Look how cute. <laughs> this is Kara. Hello. Hey. And Dan. Good to meet you. Uh, There's gonna be a lot of cameras this week, so just. Fine. I figured. I did a lot of yoga. I shaved. I, I shaved Ready. my nose hairs. Yoga and shaved. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, I married these guys, so. <laughs> Therefore, it is my joyful honor to officially acknowledge your union as husband and wife. You may kiss the bread. These are some of my only friends that actually watch They're like most the hardcore the episodes. Dello they actually watch ever. all the episodes, yeah. which is so awesome. Um, most why not? We binge them. Yeah. It's better than watching Ooh. anything on a travel channel because they're always like, up next is we're going to go check something cool out. And then when we return, I don't know, they keep hyping stuff up. Yeah, and, and it guys, never happens. Yeah, it never happens yeah. until like the end. And you're like, oh, that wasn't even that sick. Yeah. They're like, oh no, so. we think we see a shark. Oh. It's coming at us, and then it's like cut to commercial, and it comes back and does the same thing, and it's like, ah, oh, it's just like a dolphin yeah. 20 miles out. <laughs> Losers. You guys just keep going, so it's entertaining. Thanks, bro. Well, yeah. welcome yeah. aboard, Delos. Thank Thanks. you. I'm excited to be on your wall of shame. Okay. Put your hats on. Put your hats on. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Blue and I were away for a month in Tahoe. We did a lot of work on different swag. I'm really excited about this one. New Jello swag's coming out soon. Actually, by the time this video's out, go Heck get yeah. yours. Jello's tribe flags. Super high quality. I can buy that? Yep. Just to make sure it's the right side up. Okay, now you can hoist it. Okay, there go you back go. up. Yep. How's that feel, Brady? It feel feels good. Haven't sailed in like over a month and a half. Haven't sailed. It just gives you new appreciation for how spectacular it is to be out here on the water. <laughs> So, beautiful day.
I'm not sure why. We, well, we, used to, we used to have this tied to here because the block that holds the leech line tight, which is the line that goes up the left of the sail that keeps it nice. So, so look up now if you can. So that's a good tight leech line, right? Mm -hmm. Now look when, it, when it's loose. Before we had this line tied down around here and then back up to it, but for some reason it's not on anymore. Brian must have taken it off. I don't know why. He probably had a reason to do it. Yeah. But we don't know what that we is. We don't know right what that now. is, so I'm gonna put it back. How it feeling there? Well, I just went below deck to get this awesome headband and got a little nauseous. So I'm just taking it easy. Let my tummy get used to this rocking sensation. It's a pretty rolly out here, but that wind feels really nice. So I think I'm gonna survive this. 10 knots to 30 knots, like that. Are we gonna capsize? <laughs> yes. Just reef? Okay. Just gonna do a little sail over to Green Island, a couple hour sail. And the wind's kind of not being nice to us now because it's coming more out of the south. But once we make this turn, we're going to be home sweet home. Yes! I don't know, I don't know if it's what's going on, but it looks like this moorings boat next to us or sun sail looks like they're hard to ground. Should we go try and help them? They have a they have a rib over there that's definitely more powerful than anything we have, so not right now. Maybe we can anchor and see if they need help after we anchor, but we're not gonna do much. Well, congrats on your first passage, oh. Daniel. Thank you. You did it. I did it. <laughs> You guys did it. I did too. <laughs> but as with most problems in life, it's easily solved with a refreshing jump in the ocean. And it wasn't long before Kara had some serious business she wanted to get into. Why are you so inquisitive? Who are you? Why are you like this? Oh no, I don't know. It's who I am. I'm an inquisitive human being. I like to ask a lot of questions because I want to know everything I can know about everything in the world and people and where they live and what they do, why they do it and how things work. I get you, man. Yeah. Ever since the day I've met, it's been nonstop questions. I know. For me to you. Yeah. I know. I like it though because yeah. it makes me think about things in a different way. Like if I think there's one thing to like know something, but when you have to explain it to somebody else, you almost relearn it or know it better. Yeah. Or like realize what I don't know and be like, I should probably know that. Mm -hmm. So true. Yep. What is it? Hi, you're here with Kara for our segment, Questions with Kara. We're gonna take some time today to ask all these questions. I've written so many questions, my pen is dying. <laughs> <laughs> and Brady's gonna answer them. Cool. What do you think about that, senior? I'm ready, let's do it. Okay. How did Maggie get her name? When we first got Maggie, when we were in Australia, the dinghy before we had, it was like an inflatable AB that was leaking all over the place and it was just terrible. Like it was, didn't feel safe. Um, so when we found Maggie, wanted to name her something tough. Compliment. It's a compliment for sure. But we thought of like, when I think of Maggie, I feel, feel think of like a, like a big, tough, tough, like a truck driving woman. Um, there is a statue downstairs. Why does that exist? Where did you get it? What is its purpose? So this is our, our totem from the Solomon Islands mm -hmm. in the South Pacific. When we were sailing through there in 2010 and 11, 
Um, they're amazing carvers, like the, the locals from there are incredible carvers. So whenever we pull up someplace, people would paddle out in their canoe and like show us their amazing carvings and then we'd trade. Uh, this one in particular though, the guy came up and had this almost done and we were like, that thing is sweet. Like, what do you, what do you want to trade for that? And we gave him, it was like a, it was a square computer. We gave him that and gave him a monitor. And he really wanted what they call blue movies, which are adult films. So we put some adult movies on there for him. Uh, back in the day when all the neighboring villages used to fight each other, like from island to island, they'd have war. They used to have these sort of totems, especially the owl and the rat and stuff, on the front of the canoe. And it would be the symbol of what that canoe and what those people were about. But I'm pretty sure this one means like peace in the village, unity, everything is good. So if this showed up uh, on, the, on the canoe at your village, you'd be like, okay, we come in peace. Where there's another one where I think the owl is holding something else. I really wish I knew what it was, but the owl is holding some other animal or something like that. Or maybe it's not an owl, it's something else. It means like we're here for war. So this is just a symbol of like peace and respect and love. Where is the boat from before mm -hmm. Brian bought it? So the boat was originally built in La Rochelle in France okay. in the year 2000 by a company called Amel. Um, a family got it new before Brian bought the boat and they took it from France and they sailed it almost all the way around the world down to New Zealand and I think back up to the Pacific Northwest, up in that area. And that's when Brian bought the boat in 2008. They named the boat Delos because they had three kids on board. And from Greek mythology, uh, the island of Delos was a sanctuary between, halfway between heaven and earth. And my Greek mythology is a bit off these days, but... <laughs> Zeus and Artemis, or Zeus and Aphrodite, one of them, it was a god and a human. They had kids. The kids were born half human, half gods. So Zeus went to Poseidon. He's like, hey, my kids are, are banned from the heavens because they're not full gods. They can't live on earth because they're not humans. And Poseidon's like, boom, here's your island halfway between. So they had three kids. It was quite fitting for their like floating oasis halfway between heaven and earth. And uh, the name's sweet, so why change it? In case someone were to come on board, Delos, do you have any weapons or a plan of attack or a plan of defense? Do you okay. guys have a plan in case anyone breaks into Delos? A very, very, very good question. This is probably one of the most common questions. And most people say, what kind of guns do you carry on board? And we've never, ever carried like an actual firearm on Delos. Mm -hmm. So we, we find that a lot. Like if we go into a community that may be sketchy, and we present ourselves and we smile and we go to the chief or we go to somebody who's, I don't know, of higher stature or something and we like hang out with them and talk to them and get on their side, then you're pretty much golden. Oh, nice. Uh, besides that, we, we have like some machetes on board. So like oh. worst, worst case scenario, if somebody were to board the boat and we would of course lock this up. If there was girls on the boat, depends on where we are and what's going on, but we literally put them somewhere else, lock them in the cabin or something because facts are facts and you know, people can do some bad things. Couldn't so I think, break. yeah, and I think Brian and I would fight for our lives over like having girls being taken advantage of in a very bad way. Uh, right next to the door here, next to our mosquito screens, this is like the protection zone, whether you're a mosquito or a bandit. <laughs> Brian had this knife since he was like 15, 16, maybe younger. The thing is about weapons on boats is if people come to your boat with guns and you fire on them, and there's more than one of them, they're just gonna shoot to kill until you're done. You might as well just literally give up everything, let them take what they want and move on. This kind of stuff is, it makes us feel better at the end of the day. I don't know if we'd ever come down to use it, hopefully we never do, but if somebody's out there and there's one person and they are threatening our lives and we do have the chance, then at least we have something. But if five people came on board with guns, there's no way we're pulling a knife out and being like, get off our boat. Right. We got this in Fiji. 10 years ago and it's rusted and it's not even sharp like if we're in a sketchy place honestly sometimes i'll just like come out on deck and like walk around and like tap stuff with it because the if you're the only boat in an anchorage people are paying attention to you and they're like who's that weird dude with a machete on the boat walking around just that that initial thing may deter somebody 
Where did the Rumu Kanji song come from? We were in the Solomon Islands in 2011. And we sailed there after crossing the Pacific. There was three boys on the boat. Mm -hmm. Me, Brian, and Paul. Of course, nobody really knows who Paul is, but he's a legendary blonde man. Sounds stinky. He, he was so stinky, in a good way. <laughs> man Musk. And we, we met this guy, his name was Ernie. And he ran this little shack that had a bunch of hard drives in it. So he'd fly to Australia, he'd use fast internet, and download as much music videos and recent movies as possible. Then he'd fly back to Gizo and he'd burn them to DVDs and he'd sell them to the locals. So we met up with him and we're like, dude, we have hard drives full of movies. And he's like, you give me whatever you have and I'll give you all of the stuff that I've had over the years. And one of the gems we found it was a hard drive full of music videos dating back to like early 2000s that he gave to us. And this, and we were playing through it one night, probably partying. And this is the one, her Makanji music video. adapt it because it doesn't sound like that well the the song first started out is us just like kind of listening to it and actually being like a theme song for our actual lives like we just started playing it randomly like at parties and just like whenever we were just hanging out in the boat we'd play it over and over and it just like got us jazzed up and feeling happy and good so the the way we're able to use the music is because once things started being flagged on YouTube we were like shit eventually Rumakanji is gonna get flagged as copyrighted I spent like a week trying to track down these guys oh. to get them to like sign a paper that it's okay for us to use the music. I had to contact the radio station in Solomon Islands and be like, do you know this band? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah we play their song. And then these guys are in seriously in like the, the jungles of Vanuatu and Solomon Islands where they drink kava all day and like just live in huts. And so I had this email him this form and nobody had email or a printer. So like I had to do it through the radio station and luckily they had a fax machine there. So I had to print the form out and fax it to them. And the radio station like went to this guy's house and was like, this fucking guy's bothering us so much, just sign the paper. And he signed the paper and then they faxed it back to me. Cause you were a super annoying? Yeah, about oh it? yeah, <laughs> oh I was so annoying. I was so annoying. Like three times a day I'd call the radio station and be like, hey, it's Brady again. Like, did you get the guys to sign the paper for Makanji? Did you get one talks? And they're just like, oh my God. But it finally worked. So yesterday we went sailing. Um, we were out on the water for about three hours and Daniel and I got so sick. Daniel had a couple of pukes and I just curled myself into a ball in the cockpit on some pillows and just tried to pass out for the whole time because it was feeling so icky. And Brady and Alex just took care of business so hard out here. And it was super cool especially to see Alex run around like a little pro sailor taking care of everything like we tacked a bunch and she would just like grind these winches <laughs> and deal with the sheet and I know what those things mean now um, she also is just super competent she's been out here nearly two years now and this is my first time visiting her on the boat and I have to say that it's really relieving to see how at home she is here when she left California it was a little bit, I don't know, I was a little bit nervous for her, I guess, just as her friend to see her leave everything she knew and all these people that she loved so much and loved her, her family, so seeing her here on Delos, having this new family that loves her so much and that she's so clearly like an, an, an instrumental part of is really relieving. So I'm happy to be here for a bunch of reasons, but that's a big one.
We spent the next few days showing Karen and Dan what cruising life was all about. Letting the wind take you to remote locations and relaxing into the beauty of nature with your crew. But before we knew it, the time had come to have a nice downwind sail back to Falmouth Harbor. This time, swapping out seasickness for dolphins. sailed before, you'd never gotten seasick before, you'd never lived on a boat, slept on a boat, cooked on a boat, and now you've done all those things. So that makes you Delos Crew for Life. Oh! Really? Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> you need to get a t-shirt. <gasps> nice. Oh, shit. Wow, look at the beautiful yeah. sun. Thank you. Thank you. That is so cool. Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right. Have a good flight. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. Go get yeah. yours. Jellos Tribe flags. Super high quality. I can buy that. Yep. I smell like a rich guy playing tennis. <laughs> Hang on. It's a roll of film. <laughs> oh my god, that's exactly what I want on the label! No way. A rich guy playing tennis with a roll of film in his jock strap. <laughs> That's the label of the the flavor profile. The sweetness and the muskiness of both. How did you do that? Well, that was How did I do that, really? <laughs> nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Oh, yeah. I taste a, a rock garden cacti. with little gnomes all around yes. and a lot of cacti and aloe plants. I happen to pee in that gnome garden. Oh, that explains the asparagus flavor. 